cleaned up a little bit better. Um, that sticker is obviously no good. It is stuck to the face of my workbench, which is not clean at all. As you can tell, it's covered in grease and many other things. So I'm going to try to... I actually feel like that's pretty well on there. I'm confident that that'll stay put for a while. I've yet to see one of these fall off. That's kind of how it should look, roughly. Um, but I've yet to see one of those actually fall off. They just don't like to stick when you're working with them. Other than that, they're fine, though. Now, I have to save the rest of this installation kit for another gun that I'm installing a second-hand Titan into. Second-hand to that gun, it is, is my Titan, but... Um, I need the installation kit to be able to do it. Because that Titan no longer has their own, as it's already been used. Well, adhesive strips everywhere, my goodness. Alright, now we've got to go into the selector, which, if I remember correctly, should sit on the inside right here. I believe, or the outside. Somewhere. It's on that little square. 90% sure. Do a double check. There we go. V3 Titan. Um, yeah. It goes on the outside, I believe, of the little square. Or the inside. Inside. Nope. Outside. Yep. <laughs> Goes right there. Try to clean it off a little bit. <laughs> so that the sticker will actually stick properly. I know the guy that says, I don't need an installation book. Needs an insulation book. Trust. Oh. Yet again, I'm going to sit here and struggle with adhesive strips for five minutes or so. I mean, kudos to them for making it, you know. It took entirely too much time to do. It's on there pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the gearbox as to not lose it or forget it when I reassemble the gun. Oh, that's right. Solved. That's done. Now all it's for us to do is install the actual MOSFET into the gearbox itself, which is probably pretty easy. It's probably the easiest part to think of. Now I'm going to put this installation kit off to the side to use for my other weapon, which is going to be an RPK build, kind of a boneyard type of deal. I was working on it a little while ago, did all the groundwork for it, and then just never finished it. I'm 
One of my favorite things about the Titans is that they come pre-wired, so you don't gotta fuck around with wiring, which is, uh, if you've ever tried to do, it's not easy unless you have, you know, some really nice equipment, which I don't have, so I don't bother with it. Like, I understand how to do it, and I can kind of do it, it just never comes out clean, which is a big issue for me. I want all my stuff to come out clean and proper as much so as I can. Um, but now we need the bottom of the gearbox right here and we need the Titan which I actually take the top board off when I do this if you don't know Titans have a bottom and top board which um I treat this thing like a, a newborn child, essentially. Um, really fragile. I don't like to be rough with them, like, at all, period, ever, if I can avoid it. Now, for this part, you might actually have to modify the gearbox at some point if your Titan won't fit, which has happened to me multiple different times, V2, V3. Um, sometimes you just got to shave certain parts down. It happens. It's natural. It's normal. Don't be worried about it if you have to do it. Just um, take your time. Go slow. Take a little bit off at a time so you don't destroy your gearbox. Just absolutely shred it to pieces with the power tool because that would be that'd be a bad day for everyone, I think. Feed the wires in. Then you got to kind of convince it to go where you want it. Now this is the part that scares me the most because I feel like I'm being too rough with this electronic board. Um, oh, I bumped the GoPro. Look at that. Yeah, this part right here. Where I essentially just have to force the board in. And the wires never want to cooperate on a V3. They never want to do it. Essentially, you're fighting wires rather than the board for most of this. And I'll sit here for 20, 30 minutes sometimes fighting with this board. I think that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it can feel like it sometimes. I think bending them down like that can help a little bit too. It's close now. I've almost got it. Sorry if you guys can't see any of this. Um, I just got to do it in a position that feels comfortable for me. I think for this one, I actually prefer to use a washer. Um, I know on V2 gearboxes, they actually give the, the rubber and then the metal washer for the screw. And for some reason, when it comes to V3, they, they don't. They just say, yep, here's your screw. Go to town. And it's really odd, actually, that they choose to do it that way. A 
little trick for uh, V3 Titan users. Um, if you're having trouble getting your Titan into place, bend the wires down. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute after I get it screwed in. Bend the wires down rather than trying to conform to anything else. There's actually a cut in the Titan for them to go down like that. Um, after the Titan's in there, you could kind of carefully, gently maneuver them how you like. So that they can be put in however way they need to be put in so that they don't get destroyed or crushed or anything like that. Now that the bottom board is in place, I can show you what I mean. So I bent the wires down rather than I think that is where the stock wires would come out. That'll cut in the gearbox, um, which then you can, after you're done, gently kind of bend the wires back up again. But I think that's the easiest way for me to get it in there. It's by far probably the quickest I've done it. Um, didn't even have to really worry about it. But now we can actually work on getting the gearbox back together. Um, however, I'm going to quickly test to see if I remove um, some guns. I've had to remove this foam here from the top board so that the gearbox actually will fit happily. I'm sorry, you're seeing the back of my head right now, but... Nice and easy, very gentle. Don't want to break any of this. Very expensive, you know. Titan can cost you 100, 120. No, they're about 100 bucks, I believe, now. So, in this case, I don't have to remove the foam. Um, there is a little bit of a gap there, but since it's the foam and not the board itself that's causing any issues, um, it closes really easily. Um, so, anyone who's out there looking for a decent AK to build, um, die tack. This one happens to be the SLR Sharp Rose die tack line, which they're a little bit pricier now than what they were when I got mine. Um, but a Titan dropped in perfectly night, really tight. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, everything I've done to this gun in prior history and, and today has gone almost flawlessly. So, you know, kudos to them for, for considering that when they did their designs and got their gearboxes. Um, it might not be the best quality gearbox, but it is very friendly to people who want to do work on them. Um, now that that's done, I can actually get down to starting to grease the gearbox and then getting into reassembly and then hopefully testing it out, making sure that the Titan works and is, is accurately measuring the inputs drop it back into the body, and then taste her, take her for a test run, which is exciting to do. Um, really exciting, actually. Um, I use a paintbrush for greasing things. Um, pretty genius. I don't remember who I, who I saw doing this at one point in time, but a really smart idea rather than just using your hand or anything else. Um, uh, I just use some silicone-based grease. It's nothing crazy it's nothing really good just what they had at the time when I needed it so you know I'll put I'm not gonna say I put a lot on here but I put a decent amount kind of everywhere I usually do what I call the triangle on the the top and bottom of the gearbox the fact that there's a Titan in there now I'm not gonna go too crazy on greasing near the the Titan because I don't want the thing to get messed up by getting grease on the sensors or anything like that um so pretty much i'll do that and then i'll put a little bit on the bottom the bottom is where i kind of skimp out on grease a little bit i kind of just grease around the the bearings or bushings whatever you happen to have um because that's where the gears are going to be making contact uh go all the way around where the spur gear is and i'll grease the gears too um i don't grease the sector uh the sector gear because that's the one closest to the Titan, and also the one that comes into direct contact with my piston. And I don't want to get a bunch of grease in the piston assembly, because that will ruin your compression. Um, I will grease up the rails a little bit, though. Just a little bit. 
Um, gears is probably where I go the hardest on Grease, to be honest with you. Especially the first two. As I said, I don't do the sector gear because it's not necessary, in my opinion, to do it. Doesn't need grease. Shouldn't have grease. Um, the only teeth you really need to worry about being lubricated are the ones from the spur gear, which if you grease the spur gear well enough, those teeth will also be greased because they'll be in contact with greased teeth. Now this stuff starts out pretty thick. But once it sits, it actually gets a little bit more, almost like a liquid form. It's kind of weird to say it that way, but just what happens. Now, I'm hoping I didn't forget anything with my scatter brain that I got going on. I don't think I did. I'll know when I take a look at my bin of parts over here next to me. All the parts that go to this gun to make it actually function properly. Um, I don't I need the anti-reversal latch that has to go in there the spring but this is a quick change AK gearbox which is really nice another reason why I really like this die tech gun it comes with a quick change gearbox and it's a little bit different than some of the other ones like a v2 it's just the spring guide that does it um, this one actually has a spring guide but it also has a, a, a little piece of steel that goes in the back of it to keep it from coming loose and popping out of the gun which is a nice little feature because AKs don't have a screw in the back like M4s do for the buffer tube so there's really nothing keeping a quick change AK spring guide in place other than the gearbox which isn't always the best idea things go wrong okay so now that's greased I'm gonna drop this gear in here I'm actually going to grease the, uh, what are these called? I cannot remember the actual, the studs, I think, is a good name for them. Studs, gear studs, feet, pylons, I don't know. I'm actually going to grease these up just to get the, the things to stay in place. So I don't got to worry about them falling off because that is really irritating to deal with having shims pop off your your gears every I don't know, three or four seconds is really irritating now what I should do is lift up this top board a smidgen so I can actively just slide this gear in place like so just like that back in place there yeah, that's it for grease for now oh, I still got some of my brush Listen, I never claimed to be the smartest most well put together person on the planet okay okay guys I forget things too especially today for some reason I had a little bit of brain fog going on so not necessarily the best condition to be doing tech work under but I'm going to do it anyways, because why not? Now, I'm going to see if I can get this to <laughs> sit in there first try. I strongly doubt it. Me and Triggers have always had a little bit of a, uh, a fight or flight relationship. Never really liked working together. There she goes. Sorry, fellas, you're going to see my beanie. There's nothing I can do about it. All right. She's in. She's good. She's solid. Um, now we need the anti-reversal latch, which is absolutely disgusting. My goodness. Clearly didn't get that part done. Um, what's this in here that I... Think I need right now. I don't think there's really anything that I need that's in there. To be completely honest with you fellas, 
I think this is the last bit. Oh my goodness. This anti-reversal latch has seen better days. Okay, now where did the spring go? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Code red. Code red emergency. Emergency spring is gone. I bet it's attached to this microfiber. Yeah, it is. It's right there. I don't know what it is about small, sharp, metallic objects and microfiber cloths. Um, but they will just latch on. And they will just never let go. Under any circumstance. Um, actually got to put the piston assembly in. Oh, there's a tappet plate. I have a white tappet plate sitting in a white container. That is a recipe for failure. Um, and I think this is actually the stock tappet plate, I believe. Oddly enough, I didn't change it. Which, oh, that's a problem. That is a small problem. Now, that might sink when it does its thing to get into the gearbox, but... Man, you still don't want to go on there, huh? Now that might be a problem. Um, the nozzle isn't sitting all the way against the cylinder head like I'd like it to, in most cases. Um, but uh, we'll see how that goes. You know, if I feel like it's low power for some reason, that might have something to do with it. Just a bit. It comes the kind of hard part, and sorry I'm going to block your guys' vision here. Um, getting this tappet spring in behind the Titan here. I'm going to lift the Titan up a little bit. Usually you can kind of slide it in from the side here. There we go. But even that's not really working right now. Oh, come on. It's like right there. Where are my little pliers? Well, these aren't really little, but... bit of finesse work there make sure that the Titan is in place it's sitting flat yep she's sitting flat time to get the anti-reversal latch ready which I could either, sometimes I hold down with my finger, other times I'll hold down with a pair of pliers, depending on the scenario of how that day is going. <laughs> and how that particular anti-reversal latch wants to work. Um, sorry you guys, you guys are going to be blocked out for most of this, because it's stuff that I got to see. Hmm. Now that is a little bit more of a problem. Oh, 
I'm starting to think, I think that was the tap at plate, what was causing that little, um, causing the gearbox to kind of pop up a little bit. I think the tap at plate was hitting on probably the front top guard here, the rail for it, the guide rail. Sometimes that happens and you just got to put a little bit of pressure down and it'll move it out of place a little bit back into where it's supposed to be. But everything seems pretty okay. Um, that's the internals done. Um, I'm going to screw it back together and I'll get back to the, the good bit. Maybe shooting it, testing it. I don't know yet. We'll find out. Um, it doesn't have a selector on it, so I have to kind of put it in the body to actually test it. So maybe that's when I'll be back. I'll probably cut to me actually shooting it, dry firing anyhow. But that's it so far.